Well, Christmas is uh, over and uh, time to get and do a few more videos. Um, this one I've chosen today is, uh, I'm going to use this photo reference actually. This is a little town in Hertfordshire called Hitchin. Very, very old, old town. And I thought I'd have a go at a street scene. Um, you can see it's very complicated. Lots and lots of detail in there. So I've got to decide on um, perhaps simplifying it somewhat. So I'll just put a few of the characters in and all the detail in the, uh, the, uh, the street scene and the buildings is very interesting, of course. And it makes part of the character of the scene. So I've got to get some degree of realism there. Um, but it's a good idea to look and see what you really like. You know, what am I trying to capture there? I think there's a nice bright light coming here. Um, but I like these old buildings. And look at this old place right there in the background. This is uh, a very famous jeweler, which has been trading since about 1700 and something. And it's just obscured somewhat by these other buildings. But I do like the shape and the timbers. We've got timbers in some of these here. And this the old pub there, the Rose and Crown. And this old house here. And little cafes. So uh, I'm going to have a go anyway and see what I can make of this. Um, it'd be fairly loose interpretation. I'm not going to slavishly follow every little detail in it uh, but I'm going to try and um, get some degree of accuracy there so let's get myself um, a nice we should do a wash really I think I've got to do a wash give it a good soak um, and uh, then we'll do it in layers which is often a a good idea with uh, watercolour. You, you paint from light to dark. You go all your, get your lighter values in and then um, when it's dried and it, because timing is everything with watercolour. Uh, it's one thing to learn how to draw. Um, most paintings start with a good drawing, that's true, but um, It's going to be um, a layered drawing. I'll just wet this, do the sky and put some general washes in. Then when it's dry or dry, uh, I can put in some dark elements so that we get the shape of the uh, of these buildings. Um, so I'm going to uh, yes, I think we'll general wash with my squirrel brush here. Uh, but we've got to get, before we press on, we've got to get some of the sky in. And it's quite a nice colour actually today. Uh, that day I was there just before Christmas. It was um, bright and crisp, not too cold. But let's get some... Um, I think I'm going to use some cobalt today. Get some nice, it's a pretty good blue actually. Let's see what we can do. Make a nice puddle. In my palette here. I'm using a combination of paints really. I generally use Windsor and Newton. But I've got Dalaroni and I've even got a few uh, Sennelier, some French paints, um, which are very creamy and very, very nice, particularly if you're doing some flowers and floral things. So let's just put a gentle sweep in here. And it's granulating nicely, just a gentle wash here. Get behind all this. 
make it a little darker in the top. So I'll step up the concentration a little bit there. You can see I've got it tilted on my easel. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to fiddle with it. And uh, down here in the foreground, I could get some gentle wash in here. So we've got some thing to work on. The pavement area. It's just using some general colours I've got on my palette now. So this will give me a little... You notice in my drawing I've got some very strong perspective lines. The building here, they all come a vanishing point. I've tried to keep them oriented the right way. You can see the vanishing lines here. And I've got quite a few things I can add to really take our eye into this. This is all cobbled here, but they've got some nice um, lines in the, the stonework as well. So now do I put a general wash down here? I think I should in this um, building. So I think I'm going to go for a little bit of um, was that raw sienna? Yes, yeah, something sort of fairly neutral tones. That's what we should do. Just generally keep that there. I want to preserve some lights though. I'm going to try and paint around some of the characters, some of the pedestrians that I've got there. So I'll leave them um, so I can put uh, some individual, more individual colours in. So let's just get this general first wash in. This building in the background here, I want to preserve the whites of that. So we won't put anything on that for the moment. And there's whites here in this building here. So I've got to keep that nice and light. Um, I could put some darker bits down here. By having some dark bits, it will help emphasize the lights more. Um, I think I'm going to just wipe off a little bit of... I've got some blue coming down on there. I think I'll just take a damp brush. Because I want to keep that fairly light. Um, it's a building here, a roof, but that's going to be dark here, so I'm not bothered by that really. I'll just show you where it comes, the rooftop there, which will be a dark colour. Um, and these are going to be dark. That's a sort of fairly modern building set behind some of these ancient buildings. Um, but I'll uh, deal with that. Um, this is a big slab of green awning, actually. I think I can do that while we're waiting for this to dry up a little bit. Um, so let's get a nice viridian. And we'll have a viridian, I think. Oh, it's a bit strong and a bit of hookers. Hooker's green. It's good to have some nice colours as well. well. I like to be fairly 
um, realistic, but you don't have to be a slave. You can alter the tones. You don't have to be a slave to your reference. It's what I'm saying, really. Uh, if it makes a, a good painting to change things, then then do it. Uh, in my reference, it's quite a, a pale green, this bit of awning. But I'm thinking that I could uh, I could step it up a little bit, although that's not far off of what it is. I think we'll do that. Yes. This is a hundred and forty pound knot paper. So there's a little bit of texture, not very much, but let's go for that. And just down by here, there is a, a slightly different tone of green because it's a little bit in the shadow. So I'm going to take that green again and put a little bit of blue into my mix. I use a little bit of um, ultramarine, which will take my blue down a little bit. Yes, we could do that. Just along this element here. Slightly darker. I think we could still do a bit more. Just put a little bit of brown to darken it up a little bit. Yes. There we are. It's just a, sh a shade, really, a shaded element. Right. Now, what do we do here? Let's get something in here, could we? Refer to my reference a moment. Um, Yes, it's essentially white, actually, although not bright white. So I've got to uh, try and um, keep my lightest lights, perhaps for here. It's getting some sunshine there, so they're brighter. That's a creamy yellow, but here's a quite white here. And this is a little off white, so I'm going to light hint of the blue in there. Bluey green. No, I think that's... We need to wipe. Just take the brightness off it. Yes, I think we can do that. That'll do it. And the building behind there as well, another part of the building. Just take off the bright. Right. Now let's let's go straight to that and get some um, a little bit of uh, yellow in there, a little bit of ochre, I think, or how bright. I've got some Naples yellow, actually. I think that might do the job, except my brush is not clean enough. My paint a little bit contaminated there. So easy to get your uh, yellows a little bit dirty. So you want to wipe them. Um, 
with some clean water and just flush them off any greeny colour that you have on them. So uh, let me see, have I got a colour there? Yes, that can do it. Yes, I think I'm going to just wash in, drop in that lovely yellow. Um, you've got to uh, be aware that um, watercolours will dry a lot lighter. So that looks a bit bright now, but perhaps it'll, I think it will die down a bit. Um, and I've got some in this part of this building actually there was quite a bit of sunshine catching that a bit of yellow so I think I'm gonna just wipe that in there see what we've got there um, This is dry enough now, it's a little bit about this. Mm. Yes, I think we could uh now it's still a bit damp. Timing as I said is everything with watercolour. You go in too soon with with the wrong things it lays it off. It's the tonal values that allow you to get some depth into your paintings. So take your eye in. Um, yes. Also we have a little bit of bluey light as well. Um, I think I need to get a smaller brush now. Something a bit more controllable. So I'm going to go for a little one. Yes, this will do it. It's a number six synthetic brush here with quite a nice point on it. So I can um, control it a little bit better. Um, can we put in here? Maybe we should go straight to some darker colours. See what we can do. So let's make up a little neutral tent. Try and get some of these window frames in. Let's have a look. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of dark structures here holding this little awning up darkness to the windows suggestions of these windows, shop window, and try and put some light in in a little minute. With a bit of um, bit of yellow because it's all lit up. There were all the Christmas shoppers were there. So. actually into this, this 
es sehen. Trying to vary the, my darks by putting some different colours, some browns and various uh, tones in there so it doesn't all look black. Here we go. We have um, a lot of cobbles here. Very strange old timbers. I say it's a very, very old town. This is the Oxfam shop. Okay, let's a bit more shade on there on that element of the the sunshade. Um, now let me think. We need to uh, deal with some of this. very old shops, very odd frames to their windows. on with this. Yeah, 
here, big pillars here. and do some suggestions, some brickwork as well. There's a more glass frontage here. Let's try and put something in there. So I said I'm simplifying it a fair bit. Um, yes, how am I going to deal with this? Yes, I need to just put some dark in there to try and show the uh, this eaves. This is a rather nice window. Almost something out of a Dickensian novel or a film. Little windows, little panes, glass. Now I've it's dried off a little bit. I can probably put some of these roofs in. Um, there's a roof behind there, behind this street lamp. See now. Um, and a big bit of roof is uh, is along here.
as it comes down here. Do that. All right, let's. This building has a lot of um, timbers. Kind of hint at these. Sort of clad the some very odd shapes. Most paintings they they gradually evolve in front of your eyes and you think, hmm, am I gonna get anywhere with this? Is it going anywhere? Um, but don't give up. Very tempting to give up sometimes and think it's I haven't got this right, but it's it's not over till it's over. Sometime the finishing elements can suddenly make it work. So, right now I can put some of the um, this bit here. I think is that bit of the building. It's a lightish tone. Paint around that whip, that chimney there. So we do that, and um, slightly lighter in that element. But then I need to get this dark. So I'm going to get a nice bit of umber, I think. Nice, nice brown colour, so we can get some contrast. So I'm doing with that one, an element there, and um, I think I can put in. Some darker bits here to give a bit more texture. But we can deal with that later. Um, now I need to, I could use some of the dark colours to line out this building a bit better. And um, some of the shapes, the old timbers coming down here, some of them in far from perpendicular, but that's the way they are. lovely old building in the background. I want to try and keep the lights of that. So we just try and map out the shape. I say this is an old, old business from 17 something. 
a jeweler. Been there a long time. Shop window there, we'll try and put some yellow in there to suggest some light. This one is a Starbucks actually, this here. So, uh, let's see. Um, still need some darks in here. So just going to wash it in really. I'll fiddle around. Um, now I can see another window, I need another roof line I need to get in, some nice umber, and uh, I've got a chimney here to put in. I'm going to get these timbers in as well. They were very strange. to come together a little bit. So roof as well. Let's get that in. Another roof there. Another roof line. And um, let's try and uh, I need to get this in. something there. Um, yes, I'm just looking at my reference and they had some more. Very odd timbers in this building. One coming here. coming together. Um, now I need uh, some, I must get my darks 
thread otherwise it would be very flat doorway here a bit darker in there right now is it time perhaps I should um, oh I know there's a building there isn't there let's put some color in that part of that roof down there I need to put in my tree as well um, Let's get a good brown going. Um, I only want the trunk to show though. The main trunk comes down there. We had it here. to uh, yeah put some structures in here all the shop windows here all with their Christmas displays there's a lot going on actually it's quite busy this is a lovely old town actually if you you get a chance to visit very ancient town I'll put a few uh, bit of foliage on it. There was still some green actually on that one. Um, you can put lots and lots of detail on these if you wish. Depends how much time you want to spend on it. My idea was just to uh, capture the uh, the impression of it, which uh, was my main objective. Um, 
see when I've got some dark colors I could get a few more pedestrians in somebody here you can give them some different colors in a moment just get some of their shapes some of them in anyway just broad suggestion I'm the out with their dog here I've got to get some brickwork effect I'm on that tile crease and everything there can deal with that a bit later um, now let's put somebody in a sort of reddish that's a bit too red let's put a bit of blue in it knock it down a little bit isn't it let's have a close look yes I think we could do with that that'll work okay Is that person in this guy something um, that's a bit this lady some sunglasses general shapes really you can't put any detail in but you can suggest it a little figure there let's put a little child here I hope perhaps to see sad claws um, let's see if I can get a bit of I need some yellow really some nice yellow to suggest some sunlight um, well not sunlight some 
something warm going in on these windows. As I said, it was Christmas time. They had a lot of lights on. I'm going to suggest some people in, perhaps. This little cafe. Um, I think I need to uh, darken down here a little bit and I've got to put in some some little tables because this was a cafe here if I can do that um And soften some of these colours that I've got. It's, um, it's a bit orangey, isn't it? Let me think what was here. There was a little light there as well. Let's go for a a hint here. dab of red here and there could be a letterbox or somebody in red a bit of color to our our people their faces a little red and yellow you a sort of flesh colored almost. Right. So let's put something for the, uh, let's get some foliage in our tree. So what am I going to do with that? Shall I go for a fan brush? Yes, I think I should do that. Um, if I can find it over here without knocking my camera. Yes, here we are. I've got a little fan brush here. So I'm going to uh, get a mixture of some green, some light green. I've got to remember it's our tree is a little bit in the distance so I don't want it too strong a color. This is a little muted because it's away from us but having said that it's nice to have a little color so you can bend the rules rules should be broken if it suits your painting leave it like that I don't want to make it too muddy or muddy at all I should say but I need to get some more texture in this roadway though how am I going to do that it's too bright at the moment actually we 
could put a put a shadow with some of our um, pedestrians, couldn't we? Um, but I need to get some tables in here. Um, that's always tricky. Yes, this is better. This is far too bright here. If I have this darker, my lights are more prominent. So that's what I'm trying to do here. It's a little too much light tone here. So we can do that. And in fact, I think I'll take a my mop brush, my squirrely brush, get a bit more of a greyish colour in to this roadway, this pavement here. Yes, I think that's what we need. I'm keeping it light up there because I it was bright in that square there. Um, now let me think. Should I get these? I think we ought to try and get some of these tables in. So I need a brush that I've got some control over. And uh, let's get a nice cafe table colour going. Um, let's have a go. Why not? What's this shape? There's one. We had legs here. well um, Just suggestions of them, really. Um, and then we've got to put some some uh, table, some chairs, haven't we? Um, but I think to make it read, I need it's much darker under these under here, isn't it? It's a shadow. to um, some shadow of our people, of course.
right let's uh, soften that a little, a little bit so take our eye in a little bit paint round our pedestrian there don't want to lose that I need to um, show something of these cobbles. How am I going to do that? Yes, I think a little bit of dry brush with a dark tone like this. That's a little too dark. to be taken in by the um, linear perspective um, I could s emphasize some of the cobble shapes and the pavement perhaps so I think we we'll can do that with this as well all tiles and slabs and cobbles generally call a halt so you can press on but being careful not to overwork though if it looks like it's labored it isn't going to work Well, there is my finished painting of uh, Hitchin, the old town. Um, I've done a few uh, improvements or little additional things. Put a sign on here for Oxfam and uh, a little bit more detail to the tree and uh, tightened up a little bit on some of the structures here. Uh, put a few... Um, pencil marks actually which you can do there's no reason why you shouldn't and put some lines in here to try and show us the um, the cobbles and the help take our eye in with some of these perspective lines um, I'm fairly pleased with it um, I could do more actually and I was toying with the idea whether I should put some highlights using some gouache on some points here and there uh, some watercolor people don't think you should be doing that um, you know you should leave the whites to be uh, just left by the uh, by the white of the paper but uh, I read recently that um, the famous uh, watercolor painter uh, John Singer Sargent used white paint so uh, I don't think there's any great crime in using it if it whatever you like to improve your uh, uh, painting and try and capture what you've done but anyway I've got the tape off and um, you can see it's framed it up a little bit but um, 
I think I'm I'm reasonably happy with it. Anyway, if you like this, please give me a like, thumbs up, and uh, touch the subscribe button um, so that you'll be notified when I do uh, further uh, paintings. Uh, but all in all, um, I'm quite pleased. Hope you liked it anyway. Thanks for watching.